Hello and thank you for watching my video. My name is Astrid Krasnici. I am Cisco CCNA, CCMP and Palo Alto Certified Instructor. In this video we are covering PCNSA 210 and this is our Chapter 12 High Availability or HA for short. Now this is the fifth video of Chapter 12 which is 12.5 our lab about active passive high availability configuration. What we're going to do in this lab we're going to configure a dedicated high availability interface which we're going to be using it for as a data link. And we're going to configure active, passive, high availability. And then we look at the dashboard. We look at, we add the widget first, and then we look at high availability configuration. Is it working or not? Well, we observe the behavior in there. So this is the lab topology that I will be using to demonstrate high availability for you. And I will have access to two firewalls. I have a firewall A here and a firewall B. And I will access firewall A from this management interface, 192.168.1.254 IP address. And we're going to be using that as a HA1 or control link, our management interface. Firewall B is 192.168.1.253. And again, that will be used as HA1 or control link. Then I will create a dedicated high availability interface, and that will be used as HA2. And the dedicated interface will be E1 forward slash 6. That will be used as HA2 or data link. We'll give it an IP address. So 172.16.12.1 will be for firewall A and 172.16.12.2 for firewall B. Our firewall A will be the active firewall because we get the priority to 80 and we'll enable the preemption. So the firewall B will have a default priority of 100 and the preemption will be enabled as well. Okay, so there's quite a few things to do. So let me go to the firewalls, both of the firewalls, and show you. So this is my firewall A. So I have access to it 192.168.1.254. And then we have a firewall B, 192.168.1.253, the same as what we have here. Okay, so first thing that we need to configure is the enable an interface for high availability, which will be used as a data link interface or HA2. So for firewall A, I'll go to network and then interfaces and I'll choose 1.6 and in here I'll just put as a type HA2. So interface type HA2. Nothing else. I can configure a comment. Well, in production you put a comment in there. Well, that's it. I don't need to give an IP address or anything. Just click OK here. And then I'll do the same for firewall B. So I'll go to firewall B, network and then interface 1.6 and I'll enable that as a not tap interface HA2 or just HA sorry <laughs> that's it interface type HA and click OK so I got firewall B has got interface 1.6 as a HA and the firewall A has got same 1.6 HA interface and this is again if you look that will be HA2 data link we'll use it for data link okay the next thing we need to do is we need to actually enable the high availability and to do that we need to go to device and then go to the second entry will be is a high availability and in the general tab I have to go to setup and I enable it here so by default it's not enabled you see enable HA so I'll take that and group you can see that from 1 to 63 the group has to be the same so we have to we can choose the same group anything I'll put here so 1 2 as firewall 1 and 2 Description will put whatever you want, but I'm just going to say active, uh, passive, HA. And you can see the modes. We can have active, passive. That's what we're going to be using. Or we can have active, active mode. Um, no, I'm going to choose active, passive. Leave the active, active for future lessons, more advanced uh, Palo Alto lessons. And we're going to enable configuration, synchronization. And then we need to tell the peer HA1 IP address. So what he's looking for now is you see HA1 is control link, the peer IP address, which is this one here, 192.168.1.253. So here I need to put 192.168.1.253. I'm not going to have any, uh, the peer or our neighbor doesn't have a backup HA1, so I'm going to leave that to, play, to empty. Click OK. And I'll do the same for firewall B. So I'll go to firewall B and go to device and then high availability general, I will enable it there. So enable the group same 12, um, leave the description. You can put whatever you want, active and passive. 
and the peer ha1 ip address now he's looking for this ip address so firewall b the peer is firewall a with that ip address so, so 192 sorry yeah 192.168.1.254 is the ip address and click ok now the the high availability is enabled and we just need to configure like other stuff like other settings for example a data link uh, and control link well the next step is the control link control link or ha1 we can configure the control links to be if it's dedicated we'll put it here or if it's a some interface we have to enable it but by default we're going to be using our management port which is already here configured so we don't need to really change anything and encryption i'm not going to enable it and monitor whole time i'll leave it to default now i'll do the same well i don't i'm not doing anything i'm just verifying yeah so firewall a now same is the management interface that's going to be the, my uh, that's going to be the control link ha1 is a management interface and uh, for ha2 as you can see ha2 data link is the interface e1 forward slash 6 and that's the ip address so on firewall a you can see data link ha2 i'll configure that i will enable the session synchronization and the port is the one that i created one forward slash six that's my ha2 and the ip address for this is going to be 172 16 12 dot one and i'm picking this just from same network any private address but you can really pick your own ones it doesn't have to be what i'm trying to say that it doesn't have to be this address you will use a gateway if the data link interfaces are in different subnet then you have to use a gateway otherwise you can just leave it empty and transport we can leave ethernet ip or udp we're just going to leave it to ethernet i'm going to keep this the same i'm not going to change this ha2 keep it lives so i'm going to keep it as it is and click ok now we'll go to firewall b and i'll do the configuration so under the data link i'll say the port is ethernet 1 forward star 6 and the ip address of this is 172 16 12 dot 2 and the subnet is 255 sorry 255 255 255.0 that's it so now the ha1 it's already configured because that's management interface and we told what's the peer's ip address and ha2 we enabled it on the interface that we have configured so now we have to configure the the preemption and priority for example and that is under election settings so if you same place we go to election settings we click on the gear icon here and device priority you can see it is 100 but firewall b i want to leave it to default that's my default so this is what firewall b so leave it to default i will enable the preemptive so preemption will be enabled and heartbeat backup this is to avoid split split brain scenario which we talked about in the lesson and i'm not going to enable that i'm going to leave it as is i don't have a backup so the timers we have two timers recommended and aggressive and these are going to be populated themselves we don't have to worry about it depending on the firewall or if we want to change it we just click on the advanced and we click on our own timers we change the timers but i'm going to keep it to recommended so click ok now on firewall a i will actually reduce the priority to 80 which will now this will make this firewall to become the active firewall preemption is enabled and i will leave the timers to recommend it and the next thing is if you have a backup for example ha1 backup you will configure it here if you have ha2 backup you will configure it here which i don't have it so i'm not going to configure it and the next thing is active passive state uh, settings this is what happens if your link is in passive state is it is it shut down which will take longer to be to go up there and then to take over or maybe just disabled it's up but it is disabled and how long we want to wait before we actually take over um, this is to prevent you know flapping of the on the firewall going up down and so on and i can click ok and i'll do the same for firewall b so active passive settings and i just set it to auto okay the next thing i'm going to do is a link and path monitoring this is for example we are we are the active firewall but if for example some interface goes down we want to make sure that there is a failure and the passive firewall will become the new active firewall 
so we can monitor for example our interfaces so I'm just gonna give it a name here so link monitor and uh, enable and failure condition I can say any of the interfaces that I add anything goes down it's a failure or I have to wait for all interfaces to go down then it will consider it as a failure so I will add the interfaces E11 E12 and E13 so any of these interfaces goes down it will consider it as a failure and the passive firewall will take over and the, then we can do path monitoring as well and I can add a virtual router for example virtual path so router the firewall will actually ping the path and make sure this it can access it if it can't access it then that will be considered as a failure so I'm going to use my router and choose the path for example I can ping some DNS server so say that I'm pinging this for as long as I'm pinging this that it's considered fine and click OK we could change the ping uh, intervals as well if you we wanted I don't know if you saw it here ping interval and ping count we can change them I just leave it as default and I will do the same for firewall B so I'll go to link and path monitoring and I monitor the links for example uh, just say link monitor and here I'll put the interfaces that I want to monitor so Ethernet 1.1, 1.2 1, 1, and 1.3 any of the interfaces goes down that's going to be considered as failure and we can monitor a path monitoring so virtual wire path or VLAN path so we're going to say a virtual router path and our virtual router is a VR lab VR and I'm going to add uh, for as long as I ping this IP address then the path is fine okay that's all done for high availability or active passive configuration so I just need to commit and then we can go and check it so I'll commit on firewall B and then commit on firewall A and then we go and check okay commit has completed successfully on firewall A and I'm um, just checking the firewall B has been completed successfully we got some warning but that's for external dynamic list and there's a one big big warning here no valid threat license and that can be the problem remember we said that it has to match the licenses the operating system version and so on they all have to match and if we go if I go to dashboard here look the software version 9.01 this has to match so I go to the dashboard here and uh, I see software version 9.01 that matches yes that matches um, now it says the license virtual machine license none and you say here virtual machine license VM50 and that's gonna be a problem so these two they're not gonna create high availability pair because the license is different so they have an antivirus version wildfire version here they're gonna be different right so to check it anyway we have to go to dashboard which we are here and we have to add the widget of the high availability and that's located on the system and then uh, high availability so as you can see now we have a uh, red which is no good green is okay and uh, orange which is passive but we don't have anything okay so what we can see here the high availability the control link it's okay it's up and the data link is up so it's working and the, the VM service is matching but the problem what we have is the non-functional VM license mismatch with a peer so for example here the licenses are not matching between the firewall A and firewall B because the firewall B is not licensed you know I'll just use it for testing it's not licensed so that's why we don't have a peer but you can see the peers IP address and it's working they communicating with each other but the only problem is that we had don't have the license we can have a look at the system log so if I if we want to see what information we have for example go to um, monitor and then under logs we have a system log so anything that well we let me get rid of this VPN information what we want to see actually we want to see the uh, high availability stuff so I can click on this high availability and that will give it as a filter and apply that filter and I'll just see the high availability stuff so VPN client software 
uh, now matches client software version does not match global protect threat content version does not match um, we have some problems here that's why it's not working but ha1 link peer link is up ha2 peer link is up so these are uh, working what is telling me that actually that they are communicating but the only problem is that we don't have the license so peer device vm license no matching going to non-functional state so it's not actually working okay so if you remember the state was non-functional when there's error they're suspended if we switch it off for some reason for testing or something we have active passive and initial in it or initializing stage okay so that okay so thank you for watching this video this was uh, uh, demonstrating how to configure high availability or active passive high availability and we only couldn't get it working because of the license i don't have two firewalls with a license because that would be crazy just for one video um, you need about 800 pounds to buy this license but one of them is licensed and the other one is not licensed so that's why um, it wasn't working but if it was both licensed that's how that's all the configuration thank you for watching lesson 12.5 lab active passive high availability this is of chapter 12 high availability please have a look at my other videos and don't forget to subscribe this has been astrid krasny